All right, good afternoon. Dawn Devine, Tracy Ammons. Good afternoon, my dear. Okay, come on in. Good afternoon. Newts. Apostle Hayward Hamilton, I love you more. All right, now stay in tune. Stay tuned in. You got to catch this today. You know, I normally don't come in this time of day. Good afternoon. Share it. Tag. Notify. Robin Nickel, I got your message. Here I am. <laughs> Here I am. Here I am. I have not forsaken you, my dear. Yeah, share it, share it. Lock in with me. I need some more lighting. I'm gonna get some lighting. Come on, come on in. Tony Hot, come on. Deacon Kenyon. I'm going to get about, about a minute and a half because I know a lot of people don't know that I'm on this time of day. I'm doing very well, Tracy. I'm doing well. I pray that you're doing well. Get ready to take some copious notes. Jay, bless you. Bless you. Bless you, honey. You don't want to miss this pop-up. I'm in chambers and been in chambers since February came in. I'm locked in. And it's ridiculous what God is saying that he's doing. Devin, good to see you. Bless you, son. Erica Golf, good to see you, daughter. Bless you. These y'all don't feel like I've uh, left you. I haven't. You got to decode some of my messages. Dr. Peggy McKinney, my mother from the islands. Bless you, mama. Your son loves you. <laughs> Bless you all. Okay, about one more minute. We'll get everybody in. Evangelist Burrell. Love you, dear. Yeah, pop up Wednesday. Sister Logan, blessed to have you on. Okay, so this is a strange time for me to come in, but surely since February has come in, I rested in January, like God and my wife said, and so like Abraham, I obeyed the voice of my wife. I don't think I had a choice. She wouldn't let anybody call me, and I couldn't call anybody. Chase, Jackie Emmons, God bless you. Congratulations on your deaconess ship. Kyle Smith, bless you, son. 
Good to have you all on. So I've been in chambers and I've been praying and God is doing some wonderful things. Bless you, darling. He's doing some wonderful things. I want to share something with you today that I believe is necessary for a burgeoning believer to hear as well as a seasoned saint, as well as senior leaders. So if you know of a senior, bless you, bless you, uh, Marcus Blackwell. Ebony, good to see you. Bless you, honey. If you know of a senior leader that is home, please share this with them. I'm going to leave this up. Some of my Sunday um, material, um, there is a, uh, there's a situation that's going on with Facebook where a lot of us who are speaking truth, hey, Shonda, I love you, honey. That's my daughter. Uh, where we're speaking truth, apostles, the, the authentic apostles, they are, um, there's a lot of censoring that is going on. So on Sundays, sometimes if the, if the truth is uh, very weighty, I've been removing my information that I don't get any flack. So if you come on on Sundays, You'll be able to you'll be able to get it. So that's why I don't give a time. I'm going to be on every Sunday like I've been. I just you just have to catch me when you do. And uh, if uh, the replays, I'm not able to leave them up like I have been because I'm just giving straight truth. And um, Facebook, as well as other social media outlets are doing a lot of censoring, especially for the kind of truth that we preach. That's my daughter, Shanita. Shanita, good to have you on. Give Michael my love. I'm going to give him a call. I got so much I got to do to catch up with so many. Okay. So what I want to talk about today, and I want you to put this on the screen. Here's a question that God said to me. The question is that many of you are asking is, why have I received a prophecy but yet no manifestation. Prophecy without manifestation. I want to walk you through several, several uh, reasons why in this pontification, our discourse on today, why is it I have heard from God through a prophet as a vehicle to give me information or confirmation and affirmation about a particular prophecy, but yet it has not manifested. What is going on with the manifestation of my prophecy? Now, this is only for the mature. So if you're a leader, pastors, um, apostles, Fivefold leaders, bishops, um, you need to really you need to really listen to this and tune into this this insight um, that God has given me because that's the, you see prophecy without manifestation is frustration. Prophecy, hearing from a legitimate voice, prophecy. Timothy, good to see you. Prophecy that I'm hearing from a legitimate voice. It confirmed or affirmed something that God spoke to me or I read in the word about my life, my destiny, but yet it hasn't manifested. Why, Sandy, good to see you, my daughter from Atlanta. I pray that you're doing well. Why is it, why hasn't it manifested? So take these notes down. Why hasn't it manifested? All right, here we go. Turn to the book of First Timothy. I'm going to walk you through this. First Timothy, Tawana Moore, my daughter, bless you. Yes, prophecy without manifestation is frustrating. And frustrating, the root, the root word, the root word, the prefix of frustration is what? Fret. It means to worry. It means to have anxiety. It means to be disappointed. Why is that happening? All right, here it is. So now I want you to stay with me and I need you, many of you, to be mature. 
because I spoke with somebody this morning and I had to make um, confessions about history. Uh, many of the things that I did and I didn't get it right at that time when it comes to releasing people into ministry or prophecy, what those prophecies do. We need to understand the potency and the power of prophecy, what that really is, okay? So turn to 1 Timothy, the first chapter, and we're going to go, we're going to read right there because we're going to do some more, verses 18 through 20. I'm going to stay with you until you get this, and then I'm going to leave it up so that you can tell your leaders or leaders who are emerging leaders to catch this broadcast. I'm going to leave this up, okay? All right, here it is. First Timothy, the first chapter, the 18th verse. Paul speaks to Timothy in his first letter to him and says, this charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, that thou by them mightest war a good warfare, holding faith and a good conscience, which some having put away concerning faith have made shipwreck of the prophecy. They shipwreck the prophecy. And then he names them. Now, Paul doesn't normally do this throughout his epistles and his letters. But he names apostles have a tendency to do that. When we have to deal with something that is um, virus, a virus that a person carries, a disease that they carry that can be disruptive, disjointing to the ministry, especially of an apostolic level, I have done that. That name needs to be called of who it is so we don't follow that example of what they have portrayed. Are you understanding me? Put on the screen, say, I understand. Put it on the screen because we got some ground to cover. There's truth here, but there's some revelation in it, Okay. I see your hearts. That's, that's wonderful. Thank you. All right. Now, so Paul speaks to Timothy and the issue here is the context is Paul, 1 Timothy 1 and 3. He tells him, you have to remain in Ephesus. You cannot come with me. I don't want you traveling with me. I have prepared you for this hour to remain in Ephesus. Ephesus has had an explosive revival. When you read Acts 19, they had an explosive revival that was a two-year journey with Paul with, a, with 12 people, 12 disciples. And out of those 12 people, he, he separated them from religious systems, from the synagogues of those that were around so he could put his, uh, his un... Uh, he could put his uh, time into them. I'm losing a word there in my head that I wanted. Undivided attention. That he could put his undivided attention into them for what was coming. Paul knew something was coming, never knew when it was coming. And he preached unto them in Acts 19, the kingdom of God. In the kingdom of God, they learned deliverance. They were understanding all the things that surrounded their community, how to handle it, how to prepare. Share it. Share this broadcast. It's going to bless somebody. And so Paul tells Timothy, you stay there in Ephesus. The revival was great. We've gotten souls in. They're saved. But there's a slight problem. He says it in 1 Timothy 1 and 3. As I besought thee to abide or stay still at Ephesus, when I went into Macedonia, that thou mightest charge, put power behind your words, some that they teach no other doctrine. Do not teach another doctrine. What's the, what's another, what's the doctrine? 
So the doctrine is in five points. It's found in the book of Acts. Number one, the life and the ministry of Jesus. Here's the gospel. This is the doctrine. The life and the ministry of Jesus. Number two, his crucifixion and burial. Number three, his, I'm sorry, the life and the ministry of Jesus Christ, his crucifixion, his burial, his resurrection, and him now Christ seated in the heavenly places with the Father. Five points. Five points. That's the gospel of Jesus Christ, period. There were other, doct other doctrines that consent to that that we could talk about. Expiation, soteriology, uh, propitiation, uh, redemption, reconciliation, uh, justification, all of these various doctrines. But he's saying to him, the, doctor, the actual doctrine, five points, is real simple. Number one, the life and the ministry of Jesus, what he did while he was there, his birth, when he came, what did he do? Life and ministry of Jesus. Two, the crucifixion. Three, his burial. Four, his resurrection. And five would be his seat and his ascension and seat with God in heaven at the right hand of the Father. That's the gospel. I'm going to leave it up. That's the gospel. So he tells Timothy, you teach that doctrine to these people in this region. The revival came. They received the revival, but now we've got to teach doctrine so that this thing doesn't get off the rails like the church is today. The problem with the church today, the doctrine is not right. The doctrine is not right. Prophecies are not coming to pass because the doctrine, what is doctrine? The teachings and beliefs of a particular organization, organism, or people. What is it that you teach? What is it that you believe? Most of the church today has different beliefs, down to Lutheran, uh, Lutheran, Presbyterian, Methodist, all of these came or offsprings, Pentecostal, Apostolic, Apostolic, Prophetic, all of that. And there's a bunch of confusion with that. Okay, so what prophecies do and the effect of a prophecy, listen, the prophecy must follow doctrine. If the prophecy you receive does not point you back to Jesus' life and ministry, his crucifixion, his burial, his resurrection, and his now seat as the Lord Jesus Christ next on the right hand of the Father, that is inappropriate and un unacceptable doctrine. Okay? Your prophecy is not effective if there's no doctrine. Now, let's go to let's go to Deuteronomy. I tell, I'm looking at the numbers going up. Somebody's calling somebody now. Tell them. We'll go to Deuteronomy. We're going to go to Deuteronomy. The, um, this is going to fill you up real good. Go to Deuteronomy 13. Deuteronomy 13. Well, my team, you all on here, help lead through. Deuteronomy 13. This is not, now, all of the apostles that may be coming on or, or, or prophets, and you all that are leaders in this hour, you need to hear this because if it's not coming across like this, it doesn't mean that you don't have a good heart. You may have a good heart, but your doctrine is not right. But this doctrine is going to cause you to go back, look in the word of God at what I'm saying, and you will know that this is of God. Bless you, Gerald. Good to see you, son. All right. Deuteronomy 13 and 1. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and give it thee a sign or a wonder, and the sign or the wonder come to pass, 
whereof he spake unto thee, saying, let us go after other gods. Another doctrine. Another doctrine. Gods follow a doctrine. There's a teaching. Witchcraft is a teaching. Mysticism, the occult, is a teaching. Do you understand? That is a teaching. Are you following God and his doctrine with Christ? If we're not doing that, then we're not Christians. Maybe it's witchcraft or something else. I don't know what it is. But you got to really check that because any kind of doctrine you come up with other than the doctrine of Jesus Christ, then that's not Christianity. That's why we see the church in the turmoil that it is right now. Now watch this. He says, uh, and the sign of the wonder come to pass whereof he spake unto you saying, let us go after other gods of doctrines which thou hast not known and let us serve them. Let's create a doctrine. Let's create a teaching. Let's create a, a half of a biblical system, a doctrinal system, right? That's other than what we've already known. We've at, excuse me, we've added something to it. We've added something to it or We've taken something away from it. I'm watching my clock here. Verse three, thou shall not hearken or hear unto the words of that prophet. If the prophet or the apostle is teaching a doctrine of another Jesus, of another Holy Ghost, of another gospel, we are not to hear it. It's so deep until I need you to understand. I'm going to reiterate as an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, Paul's words in Galatians 1. If another person or an angel come and preach another gospel unto you, other than the gospel that I have preached to you, let him or her be a curse. It is a curse. What is a curse? It is a damnation. It will condemn your soul. Okay? I'm going to keep it up, Cynthia. It's going to stay up. I'm going to leave it up for you, baby. All right? You should not hear that prophet when they whisper in your ear and these warlocks and these witches that are posing to be authentic apostles and prophets, but they don't have no doctrine. They have a platform of prophecy. They have a platform of mysticism. They have a platform that gives them words to speak into your ear. And when you're finished, you're confused. And the words leave you away, turn you away from the gospel, turn you away from leadership that's teaching the gospel and leads you into some other type of confusion that ain't God. That is not God. God is not the engineer. He is not the manifester of confusion. We know who that is. That's the devil. He's the author, the creator, the distributor of all confusion. So if you're confused in your doctrine, how to live it, how to carry it out, how it should function, the operation, the administration, and the measure, then that means you heard from a false prophet. And they are leading you into something that is not of Jesus Christ, maybe another Jesus Christ, but not our Jesus Christ. Hmm? Five points, remember? Life and ministry of Jesus Christ. The, you cannot leave out the crucifixion, the cross he died, the burial, how he was underground for three days, and his resurrection. Lastly, his ascension and seat at the right hand of the Father. Okay? Gospel. Gospel. All right. So if the prophet 
Thou shalt not hear that prophet when the sign or the wonder. See, people chasing signs, wonders, and miracles. That's kept, that Warlocks can do that. Warlocks can grow legs. Warlocks can work miracles while you're in the building. And as soon as you, warlocks can work in deliverance. It's not true deliverance. They can lay hands on you and it appears that something is coming out of you and it may even come out of you, but that's their magic. When they get finished and you get outside, that demon that they cast out by permission will have permission to resume its authority back in you. Because uh, you following another doctrine. You following another teacher. It's time to get it together and get it right. We need to expose this false mess. Then you give them, let them, they don't preach. They're not contextual. They're not exegetical. They're not hermeneutical. They are not homiletical, can't even preach a good message. And then you give them a thousand dollar offering. Hmm? You share your life savings with these false prophets that lead you into a sign and a wonder. It is not the doctrine of Jesus Christ. Are you hearing me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Listen to this. It says, when that prophet, the words of that, don't hear those words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams, dreams for the Lord your God proveth you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. So now you're being tested. The church is being tested in a pandemic. Do you really love God? Are you looking for something to tickle your fancy? To make you feel happy and comfortable? Or are you looking for the truth? What is it that you're looking for? I know I'm coming through here. My summer. I know I've been in chambers. Mm -hmm. We got people crying now. Oh, you're crying now about the false prophets. You're crying now about the prophet of the prophet. But we wasn't saying nothing 20 years ago. I've been crying this for years. The same teaching and I've been ignored. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Mm -hmm. my, my doctrine has not changed. I've stayed with this Bible. Mm hmm? You got people prophesying, telling you where to go. Prophesying, telling you, leave there, leave there, go there. Don't you know where you belong? Don't you know what God is telling you? Don't you read the Bible for yourself? Don't you have revelation from God? You have every right to have it. Your pastor, your apostles, your, you, nobody has the right to control what you believe. We can tell you the truth, but Paul says to the church at Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, the first chapter, we have not come to dominate your faith. We have not come to control your faith, but we're helpers of your joy. We're helpers of your joy, but we ain't here to dominate your faith. Okay? So sometimes the, the rebukes and the reprovals and the corrections, they're all coming to align you properly with the doctrine. Not so much the man or the woman that I believe what my church believes, nor is what your church believe lined up with Christ. Is it lined up with the gospel? That's the problem that's happening. Here we go. All right, here we go. Now it says, ye shall, verse um, Deuteronomy 13, 4, ye shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments. Stay with the word and obey his voice. Whose voice are you listening to? Are you listening to the voice that follows the word? If you're listening to the voice that follows the word, that's the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost does not veer from the words that Jesus has already spoken. That's what he is. That's his voice. That's his presence. 
It follows the word of God. So we got to measure. Even when I get off today, I'm going to give you apostolic right and authority. Follow what I said. Look at the teaching, line it up and see if it lines up with the word. I promise you it will. He says, and obey his voice and ye shall serve him and cleave unto him. Look at what it says. Cleave unto him. You're going to connect it. That's intimacy. That word cleave means that one becomes one with the other. And Adam, shall, you shall leave your mother and your father and cleave. Ephesians 5, you leave your mother and your father and become one with your wife. Cleave, you two become one. Now, who are you in the bed with? This is the question. Who are you in the bed with? Who are you led by? Because we got a lot of people saying they're apostles, and I see you. I want you to understand that. Papa Kent speaks with authority. Mm -hmm. I wasn't Papa Kent a year ago. I'm Papa Kent since I came into the world. Uh, 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 Abraham was still, he was a man of God. He was a father to be before Abraham came. And before, I mean, Isaac came. And when Isaac came, he was acknowledged as a father before the baby ever came. He said, now walk perfectly before me. Hmm? You got to cleave unto him. I'm not looking for my congregation to cleave unto me. I don't want them to be intimate with me. They don't have to eat with me. Those are some of the mistakes I've made. Don't, don't, you don't have to eat at me. You don't have to be around with me. We don't have to share Christmas together. We don't have to share Thanksgiving together. Come on, somebody. We don't have to do that. You don't never have to walk in my house. And it might be feasible that you not. Because you get too common. People get too common. You think you know you're your leader. Mm -mm. And so sometimes for us, we do that. We do that because there's something missing in us. Or there's something missing in you. You're not to become one with us. You're to become one with the Lord. So it's my job to get you to God. That you become one with him. You should be sharing this. Somebody is out there and needs to hear this. I ain't even got to Timothy yet. Listen to this. Listen to this. He says, verse 5. And that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death. For leading people astray. They will die. They will die. Hear me prophetically. They will die. That's why we've seen death in this plague like it's been. Because we have not stayed with the doctrine. Bishops and apostles and leaders past have not stayed with the doctrine. You have not manifested God and God has, he didn't create it, man created it. Allow this thing to pass through here. And some of you all still want to get back to a building and you don't understand you didn't get the lesson yet. The, the absence is uh, of church is not just the physicality of being in the building. God wanted us absent from you and he wanted you absent from us that we could get stuff together with him. I know I'm talking good. I know I'm talking good right here. Huh? I know I'm talking good. God, help me in here. Hmm? I know I'm talking good. You don't have to tell me. I know I'm talking good. Hmm? That prophet or that dreamer, the liar that creates false signs and wonders, they're going to die. You're going to die. That's what's going to happen. Oh, well, apostle, that's Old Testament. No, but you're leading God's people to strength. You will be judged for that. Yes, you will. Yes, you will. I'm not speaking it over you. I can't make you die. I can't bless you or curse you. That's not in my mouth to do. But I want you to understand, you're going to pay for leading God's people astray. That's what's going to happen now. I promise you. 
You lazy, and I'm talking about leaders, lazy, shiftless, trifling, won't read your Bible, won't pray. Why did God shut everything down? To get you alone so you could understand you don't need people like you need them, and they don't need you like they think they need you. We need to get a strong church of people that know how to function without daddy, without, without papa, without uh, uh, elder so-and-so and bishop so-and-so. Mm -hmm. Come on, talk to me. Come on and talk to me. No, they ain't got the lesson yet. Still ain't got the lesson. Now, here we go. Now, look, here it is. He said they're going to die because he has spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you out of the house of bondage to thrust thee out of the way which the Lord God commanded thee to walk in, so shalt thou put the evil away from the midst of thee. Look at what he's saying. That's Bible. God set a precedent in the government of Israel early on. This is how it has to be. If you lead my people astray because you don't want to keep your head in a book, you want to read other books, but you ain't read this book. I got a library full of material, but I can't spend my time reading what Dr. So-and-so said and all of that kind of stuff when he ain't lined up with the word. I don't want to hear it. I'm not going to buy it. And if I bought it and he ain't walking with God, then I'm going to throw it out. That's where we are right now. Come on. That's where we at right now. Come on. Look what it says, verse 6. And if thy brother, if your brother, the son of thy mother, or thy son, or thy daughter, or thy wife, or thy bosom, of thy bosom, or your friend, which is as thine own soul, entice thee secretly. If they come, this, this is what it said. If your wife, your husband, if your mother, your son, your daughter, your wife, your husband, your bosom, your best friend, your dog, your buddy, whatever, whatever, your friend, which is as, as thy own soul, if they entice you secretly, because that's what they're doing, secretly in your inbox, secretly turn you away from God. Here's what it said, saying, let us go and serve other gods. We ain't got to hear all of that. We ain't got to do all of that. We ain't got to follow through with all that, which thou has not known thou nor thy fathers. You haven't known them. He said, namely of the gods of the people which are round about you, nigh unto thee, or far off from thee, from the one end of the earth, even unto the other end of the earth. He said, you want to follow them, but you won't cleave unto me. You won't follow me. And these people are leaving you away. Thou shall not, it says, verse 8, Deuteronomy 13, 8, thou shall not consent unto them him, nor hearken unto him, neither shall thine eye pity him, don't feel sorry for him, neither shall thou spare, neither shall thou conceal him, expose him, expose him for the devil that they are, you nasty, expose him for the devil that they are, hmm? It's one thing for it to be in the pew. It's another thing for you to be so detestable that you lead God's people away in your bed. I'm talking about a leader. You're supposed to be a leader and you leading God's people away in your bed. You trifling. That's a part of your history. Hmm? And then you speak something prophecy, prophesying, and you're leading God's people away from him. They're not your people. They're not your people. I've never told my church, go here, go there. Don't be around this one or don't be around that one. No, go over there and find out what they're doing. And if that's where you need to be, then I want you to go there. Stay right there. 
And if you have to come back, then you come back. Leave on the right terms, though. You can always come back. Hmm? I'm not concealing nothing over here from you. I'm not stopping you from hearing anything else. I want you to hear it. I want you to weigh my doctrine. Hmm? I want you to weigh the, my doctrine, what I teach, what I preach, what I believe. And if my doctrine is not in you, you won't be back. You can't hold it. If you get messed up and you want to come back, you'll come back. That's the weight of my doctrine. It ain't my voice trying to tell you where to go and what you need to do. Y'all not talking back to me on this feed now. Hmm? My God, help me. My God, help me. Listen to what it says. But thou shalt surely kill him. Kill that spirit. Thine hand shall be first upon him to put him to death. And afterwards, the hand of the people. You need to cut it off. You need to cut it off. Cut it off and cut it out. Let it go. My God, help me. Then it says, verse 10, and thou shalt stone him with stones that he died because he has sought to thrust thee away from the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Kill that spirit. That's not physically. Back then it was physically. We're under grace now. We're under the grace dispensation. Let's understand that. We're under the grace dispensation. You don't go killing nobody and cut, but you need to kill their spirit. And I'm not saying run them down, but they, it needs to be known. No, this person is not in a position where they can lead people effectively. They are, they are destructive. They are detrimental to the body of Christ. Yes, it needs to be known and heard. We need to expose them. Yes. For the mature. And then the people need to kill that spirit. You need to shut that spirit down. It is not your right. I don't care who you are. To go on through social media. Blasting another leader. And cutting them cutting them down. No, 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 no. You don't hear me mentioning the name. I ain't saying nothing. When I mention names. I mention names in private. With leaders. Not with the church. Timothy. Watch out for Hymenaeus and Alexander. Why? Because they have not received prophecy. They will not follow the doctrine. And therefore, they're disruptive. You need to dispel them and expose them for who they are and release them. Ah, one of my daughters said, what did she say? Protocol. There it is. That's right. Hey, Nazel, my son, I love you. Huh? Now let's go back to Timothy. Let's go back. Let's go back up. Let's go back up. Uh-huh. Because I'm tired of seeing it. And they won't stop. You in the pandemic and you still won't stop. Hmm? Come on. You still doing the same thing. Joanne Hooper, I love you, daughter. You're doing the same thing. You're manipulative. You're dominating, you're controlling men with Jezebel spirits, that doctrine in them that was in Thyatira. They're in that same thing. And the Bible said as many that are in the bed with them, you're going to die with them. If you get in the bed with Jezebel, you're going to die in the condemnation with her because she has space to repent. That spirit has space to repent and will not repent. I don't play with people that won't repent. I ain't talking about no worldly sorrow. I said repentance. Are you hearing me? Hmm? So Paul tells Timothy, right? He says this, charge them. He said, I commit a charge to you, son, of the prophecies. He don't even say one prophecy. Paul is saying prophecies. In Acts 16, Paul goes into Macedonia. He meets a young man named this young boy, Timothy, and he literally adopts him because there's no father. 
We'll get into that in a minute. He adopts him, takes him in, and becomes his papa. Hmm? Sometimes, here it is, most of the time it should be this way, that your spiritual father carries a greater weight and rank than your natural father. I'm not saying all the time. I'm saying most of the time. Because if your parents weren't saved, now if you got a saved father, that's another thing. And they taught you the ropes and they taught you the word and they instruct you how to go in and how to go out with other leaders and how to respect and how to honor. That's one thing. But when you come in from a place, most of the time in the African-American community, what I have noticed with young men and young women, there is no father that has a place of permanency in their life. And so like Timothy, they, the spiritual father is now has the greater rank to guide that person to where they have to be in their destiny. All right? And so he says, listen, Timothy, there are prophecies on you. Where do they come from? Let's understand prophecies, prophecies. There is a prophecy is a way of God communicating with you that which heaven has already declared. Prophecy is God's way of communicating with you from heaven what God has said for you to fulfill in the earth realm. You have to have fathers. Okay, so here's what, here's what happens with a legitimate prophet. Listen to this. This is from my notes, from my book, my new book that's coming out. A legitimate prophet, the prophet's nature is being a divine communicator of the reason, logic, and intelligence of the Godhead or another deity for the explicit purpose of will, purposes, plans, and ideas of God or their deity. Now, who's sending you? Here's the, here's, who's sending you? Who's sending you? Who sent you? See, the church ain't teaching this. People just following anybody. You got leaders that stumbling all over the place and messy and trifling and low down and evil and mean and vindictive and bitter and angry. Come on here. Huh? You mad because you're too young because you didn't have a childhood. You like Michael Jackson. You never had a childhood. So you mean and evil and bitter and vindictive. That's because you were in an office that you didn't qualify for. And some older ones too. You were pushed too early and you were pushed out and you didn't have the fathers backing you. You did not have the mothers and the prayer warriors and the intercessors behind you. You have no history to follow. Where is your history? Mm, I got this so tart. You should be sharing. So when that divine communication comes, it sets your life up for your future. I had people when I was 18. Now I was called when I was 14. I was struck by lightning. But I grew up by the time I got in college, I was called to preach at saved at 17. But by the time I was 18, I sat under a leader. His name was Bishop Reuben Timothy Jones Sr. He was the first one. I didn't know nothing about nothing. He was an older father and an elder man. And he laid his big hands on me. And he said that I was special. And I was going to do something great for God. He said it. I had other people in my life. I was trained in the church of God in Christ. I was tested. I was vetted. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I was vetted. I was trained. I was examined. I had to write. I had to prepare. Come on here. This is long before I ever went to seminary. I never went to seminary till I was 42 years old. Huh? That man laid his hands on me at 19th in Columbia 
And God infused me at that point. I didn't know where I was going to go. I didn't know what I was going to go through. I didn't know what I was going to suffer. Nothing. I had nothing. I didn't know anything. But he didn't let me run nowhere. I didn't have permission to go and preach at 18. No, no, no. You don't go nowhere. You don't lay hands on nobody. Don't touch nobody. He allowed me to preach on the campus of Delaware State University when I entered in, in 1979. He said, yes, you can preach, but don't you touch nobody. I'm sharing experience today. Don't you put your hands on nobody. You're not ready because it's not always that you dirty, but you laying your hands on something dirty and that thing can be transferred. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Y'all ain't saying nothing. He wouldn't let me do it. He wouldn't let me do it. And I adhere to what he said. And he correct me. And he reproved me. And he rebuked me. And he, he listen, he got in my world and dealt with me because I was coming out the world and all I did was everything my way. He got in me. He got in me and got on me. Are you listening? So no matter what now, I'm looking 50, almost 40 some years. I was counting this morning. 40 some years later, I'm stepping into what he called me. 40 some years later, after that man laid his hands on me, and Lord have I suffered. And Lord have I paid great dues for the oil on my life, as y'all say, for the anointing on me and for the glory that I carry and the mantle that is on my life. But it didn't start like that. It didn't start like that. There were prophecies, Marlene D. Talley. I sat under her in prayer. Mother Anna Brown, y'all ain't saying nothing. Mother Anna Brown in Church of God in Christ at the time. Mother Anna Wiggins, I sat under all of those. I had mothers, I had fathers, I had people to instruct me. They prepared the way for me. Mother Irene A. Oakley spoke to me on the phone. Uh, Mother Winnie Hightower. These are people who were legendary in their time and prepared me for where I am today. So when you see me, it's not just my mother and my father. You need to see behind me the mantle that I carry. You can see there are voices behind me that have encouraged me when I thought I was losing my mind. There are people behind me that taught me how to pray when I was under pressure. There are people behind me that encourage me that are now in the heavens. They went from labor to reward. They're no longer here, but their words are over my life. There are prophecies. Come on and talk to me. Say, I understand. I feel like preaching in here today, y'all. I didn't know I was coming this way. But I feel my authority, my God, the weight of God is on me now. You can get this impartation today. You can get this impartation. I've been disrespected. I've been ruined. I've been stood with people and, and, and been uh, 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 disregarded, not pushed, not helped, not supported, everything. Didn't complain about it. I just kept moving. Because I had voices. Hey, I had prophecies. Ah, my samba. I had prophecies riding my shoulders. Come on, talk to me here. Who has a prophecy riding their shoulders? Hmm? Who has a prophecy riding their shoulders? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? There are some of you on here. I've laid hands on you. I prayed for you. I've spoken over you. Oh, that's a prophetic word that's riding your shoulders. It's so premature. Oh my God, I feel premature death can't take you out because you sat under my mantle. It's nothing but life in me.
The only person that would want to delusion you, that would want to delusionize you or bring you into desertion about what it is you have is a witch or a warlock or a wizard or a necromancer because they want to pull you away and say the thing that is good and the thing that is true is evil and false. No, not with this doctrine like this. What's riding on your shoulders? Huh? The weight of suffering, what's riding on your shoulders? Mm? Who spoke over you? Y'all know my son did it, they call ya. Huh? I need to know. I need to know. I need to know. Ah, my son, baby, kuta. Huh? What is it? Who is it? What did they say? What did they speak? Because it ought to be something that's holding you. Hmm? It ought to be something. I do too, Joanne. I feel glory. My God, I'm trying to contain myself. But I feel the weight of God. My God. I feel it. I feel it, y'all. Oh, my God. I, I'm about to take it. I want you to understand in this studio, it's tangible what I feel. The power of God is tangible. When the truth comes... It refutes every lie. Yes, that's some of, uh, it's the fire of God that destroys every evil verbiage and rhetoric that has ever been spoken over your life. I'm breaking curses and destroying yokes right now as I speak. Uh, receive it in your house and lift your hands up until the Lord thank you. Uh, shaman de de vehicles, uh. This ain't no rookie that just come here. Oh, no, no, no. I was vetted. I was vetted. Timothy, you were vetted. That word to vet means, listen, listen to this. It means careful, critical examination. That means I need you to walk with me before we have an affirmation and a confirmation and we throw in oil and putting on robes and crowns and staffs, I'm going to do a careful, critical examination. That word examination in the Greek, it means to interrogate, to investigate. I need to look into you before I release you. Stop falling for this lie and this confusion from these false prophets and apostles that want to give you an anointing that takes 20 years to develop over in one weekend. Devil, you a liar. It don't come in no one weekend and you an apostle. No, no. We need to see your suffering. Where's your brokenness? Where's your pain? You should even have your enemies to I feel the best of there ought to be your enemies should validate you. huh? There ought to be enemies that say, yes, because I tried to destroy him. Huh? I tried to destroy her and God brought me. I tried, but brought, God brought me to confusion. Hmm? Huh? Come on, my side. Come on here. Huh? I need to know. How many times, you an apostle, how many times have you been at the death's door? I need to know. <laughs> uh, it ain't going to take you, but how many times have you been at the door? Huh? And the doctor called it wrong because huh? he didn't understand that the weight of the power and the oil on your life and the glory, it would trespass every sickness and every disease. Ah. Huh? Paul says, I've had deaths off. I never understood that until I stepped into it. And then I begin to realize, my God, uh -huh. how many times have you been betrayed mm. by the people who said they loved you most? How many folks started out with you and now you can't find them? I need somebody. I feel like preaching now. I promise you. 
I, I, I need somebody to help me here. I need to know. I need to know. I need to know how many enemies may have not said that they were sorry for what they put you through, but they realized that the plot and the plan hmm, that they executed against your life, it came right back to them. Why? Because what God put on your life cannot destroy you. Ah. I feel weight in here. Mm. Ah, maybe that's because I ain't done a lot for y'all lately in a while. Woo, my God. Huh? I, I need to know. I need to know a survivor. Mm. I ain't talking about no degree. I need to see your doctorate in suffering. Mm -hmm. How long have you borne it? I, do you not know I could have been on major platforms right now, but I refuse to lay on a bed on my back. I refuse to lay on my stomach on a bed. I refuse to get on my knees before a man and kiss a ring. The devil is a liar. Not me. It ain't going to happen. So if they say it's taking him, I feel God in here a long time to get to where he got to. And it seemed like he ain't got there. And mm -hmm, yeah, Apostle Ken is old. I hear you. Apostle Ken is old. Apostle Ken is done with. He ain't nobody moving with that. And ain't nobody going that way. That old doctrine. Mm -hmm. But why am I still here looking better than you? Why is it come on here that I am who I am by the the grace of God and no matter what has come my direction my doctorate in suffering huh uh-huh I got the PhD I got the doctorate come on here I got the hood and the tassel come on and somebody say something huh but I want you to understand the greatest the greatest degree that I've ever received was when heaven crowned me and they rejoice in the cloud of witnesses have rejoiced and said, we thank God for Richard's suffering. Huh? Oh my God, help me here. Y'all should be praying for me. Oh God. Michelle Burrell, I feel something in here. I didn't come on here. I thought I was going to do 30 minutes. I feel like going now. Oh, God, I thank you. Oh, God, I thank you. Have you been under a critique? Hmm? Have you withstood the critique? Critical examination, investigated. Have you been vetted, screened? Has there been an assessment of your history? Huh? Have you been evaluated? Oh, Lord, have mercy. See, all we want to do is take somebody that talk good and that's gifted and then send them. And we don't realize that's a warlock. Mm? That's a leader of the occult. That's a leader of the occult. And then you send them and you put them in God's church and you validate them, not knowing them. You can't put your hands on people you don't know. Hmm? Everybody can't say I'm their father because I'm not. I didn't raise you. I didn't develop you. You were not vetted in my community. I have you. you ain't sat long enough for me to critically examine you. That's why Anise Davis that passed away, she was saying that's my dad. Why? Because she understood. She didn't walk in the midst and tell me about her ministry and front line. I never even knew what she was doing. She said, I'm here for the man of God and his wife to cover him because it's not happening. Too much is getting to this man. Help me in here today. My, 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 my. Hmm? Don't tell me what you got. Tell me what you went without. I want to hear it. I want to hear what you went without. I want to hear your days of fasting and praying to subjugate your flesh from what it really wanted. I need to hear it. I, I, I need to hear it. I need to hear it. I hear, need to hear it. Huh? We, we, we we're ordaining people this year and, and there's some things that we're doing and, and I, I have to evaluate. I'm in that place. And so he says, Paul, Timothy, you, one of the reasons why, another reason why your prophecy is not coming to pass because you received it, but you won't war for it. You want war in your doctrine? 
You want war, you want war, you want war in your personal life. You want war for your marriage. You want war for your children. Come on, somebody. You refuse to war. You will not war. He said war a good warfare. Engage the enemy in your flesh. Engage the enemy in your mind. It's called the enemy. Wrestle for years. I had to wrestle with me. Mm -hmm. For me. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't be in a pulpit. Because I was wrestling with me. I couldn't be in a pulpit. I couldn't be in a pulpit. Because I had to wrestle with the nastiness in me. I had to wrestle with the filth that was in my consciousness. God, have mercy. I had to wrestle with the vileness that was in me, transmitted from my father's bloodline. Huh? From my mother's bloodline. I had to wrestle with that. I had to, I had to fight. I had to engage. Me, my city, Kurabahata, in order to clean up me. Now, ain't nobody washed me. I'm a grown man. I get in the tub every night and I take a mineral bath. Every now and then I take a shower, but I got to take a mineral bath every night with magnesium to heal my body. Hmm? Nobody washes me. Nobody, Lady Kendall sometimes come in there and wash my back and scrub me. And what have you? I, I, no, 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 no. Nobody washes me. So why when we come over here this side with God? We need this one to wash us. And I need a word from the Lord. No, you need to get a word for yourself. And you need to wash out every spot, every wrinkle, every blemish, everything that comes against you. Because these are the entities that fight with you and war with you for you to become a false presenter of the truth. And not a standard for Jesus Christ. Holy Ghost is talking. This ain't Richard talking now. This is the Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Ghost. Paul speaks to Timothy. The first thing that he does, put it on the screen. He gives him charges all through 1st and 2nd Timothy. And then when he speaks to Titus, I charge you before the Lord and angels. I charge you to be responsible. I put the power of heaven in agreement because the prophecies are on you and your vetting is secure. I put it upon you now to go forth. This young man was questioning what he could carry, but there was nothing he needed to question because he had prophecies that weren't even coming to pass yet because he wouldn't stir up his gift. He said, these guys, Hymenaeus and Alexander, have lost their minds playing with ministry. Shipwreck, you hit the rocks and tear up the ministry because you were not ready. I see you, Kyle, from Africa. You, because this is an international word. I, you, you were not ready at that time. Hmm? Yeah. Samana. Jesus. I feel the weight of God. I feel fire right in here. Now, my God, y'all witches and warlocks, you better repent. That's what you better do. You better stop trying to keep doing what you're doing. Hear from Papa Kent. You better do some repenting. Thank you, Jesus. Go somewhere and clean your flesh up. Clean your, having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, 2 Corinthians, the seventh chapter, the verse, verse, having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and of the spirit, perfecting ourselves in the fear of holiness. Huh? You need to be cleaning yourself up. Why you think I'm in chambers? It ain't because I'm perfect. And I don't run the street with people. Oh, but it's the idiosyncrasies. It's the small foxes that destroy the vine. It's the little pieces of crumbs that we let get by that, that eventually will clog up the pipes and the sink. Are you listening to me on here? Huh? Oh, if I was in church right now, I'd be purging 
Let's purge. Let's purge in here. We need to purge this church church of this foolishness and purge this church of these unclean things and, and this unclean mind and this, this spirit of following this one and following that one when their words are not leading you back to him. Listen to what he says. He said the prophecies are on you, but watch this. Look at 1 Timothy 4, 1 Timothy 4 and 13. And 14. I need you to put that on the screen. 1 Timothy 4, 1 Timothy 4, 13 and 14. When you put it on the screen, then I'm going to start teaching. Tamika, I'm glad to hear you. I know it, baby. I love you. You're a true daughter. She said, I'm listening, sir. I'm listening, sir. We don't have to be in the building. There's already a connection. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Hmm? Hmm? Some of my children have to go and they have to experience things for themselves, but it never with the, the umbilical cord, the connect is the, there's never been a disconnection, but you got to go learn some things. And sometimes we got to let people go learn some things. Here it is. All right. First Timothy 4, 13. Till I come, Timothy, give attention to reading, exhortation, and to what? Doctrine. If there's a charge, the next thing that comes is the doctrine. The next thing that comes is the doctrine. You're going to go do something. You're going to go be something. You got to charge, but you got to follow the doctrine. Just like Deuteronomy 13. You can't make up something on your own. You have to follow the direct. Watch this. Now look at this. Follow the doctrine. I'm not veering from the word of God. I'm a word man. I'm a biblicist. I'm a theologian. Watch this. He says, neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by what? Prophecy. You see that? It was given by prophecy. The gift in you was given for you to pay attention to. It was given by prophecy. God's communication from heaven for you in the earth realm to carry out your destiny. Hear a father talking today. Hear me. He says it's prophecy. With the laying on of hands of the presbytery. Of the presbytery. What is he talking about? The Greek word is presbyteros. It means an elder. Listen to this. It means an elder. The literal Greek means an elder. It means one who is a senior. So tell me this. Just think. How is it I'm 22, you 29, and you laying your hands on me, 29 to 22, and you releasing and activating me? That's not a legitimate presbytery. The presbytery is older seniors. Not only older seniors, but older mothers that have watched you grow, that have watched your ministry, that have watched the development of your life, that can vouch for you, that can validate you, that can support you and say, yes, he has it. Before Mother R.T. Jones passed away and left the planet, I'm giving you history here. She called me and she said, they told me at that time she had voice problems, but they said, mother wants you to come and run a revival for two days. And I went over to Christian Tabernacle, 22nd and Clearfield, and I ran a revival for two days. And on the second day, that Friday, a Thursday or Friday, she said to me, she said, she whispered in my ear because she had voice pro vocal problems at that time. She whispered in my ear, I know what they said. She whispered in my ear and said, you got it. That's what she said. You got it. You got it. Go for it. That was like the second year of Impact Deliverance Center when I started. And I've been now pastoring that church. I pastored that church up to 27 years until God sent the presbytery. And that's stopped at 27. I'm pastoring now through all of the churches, Florida and all across this country. 
I'll pass it through here. Who is it that's senior? I went to Church of God in Christ. I was ordained an elder and a pastor in the church at the age of 22, uh, 24. Bishop O.T. Jones laid his hand, Junior, laid his hands on me. The presbytery laid their hands on me. Older men, not no young person, not somebody that just got here, older men. They validated and said he took his test. He orally stood competent, psychologically. He's competent. Now he's going to have some stuff he's going to have to go through. But he stood competent in what we asked from him. Mm -hmm. You hear me? You hear me? So he can tell Timothy, who was a little timid, I, I, about releasing his gifts. He, he was about to predict, but he said, you, there were, you're going to have to war for the prophecy over your head through your doctrine. Hmm? Then he says, listen, 15, meditate. I got to get ready to stop, y'all. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them that thy profiting may appear to all. If your gift is operating Everybody should see your gift. I'm not talking about I was accurate and precise with a prophecy. Witches and warlocks can do that. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the accuracy of your suffering. We should be able to see it. Yup. She went through that. Yup. We watched her endure. Yes. We watched him endure it. Yes, we did. We see it. We see it. He understands the protocols. He understands the litigation of the spirit realm. He understands how to follow through in the executive of the offices, all fivefold. He knows how to withstand pressure. He knows how to keep going, take a licking, and keep ticking. Yeah, that's validated ministry. Not just because you come in and you say a few things good and you say it. And then you got this younger generation. They feel like they better than everybody else. And that's old. And well, you're going to get old one day. You better be careful saying that. You're going to get old one day. You're going to wish you look like me. You're going to wish you can stand like me. Because I've been through the, I'm proven. I am proven, baby. I've been through the fire, the tech. Come on here. Pope folk done wrote me off, said I'd be dead, lied, said I had this wrong, that wrong, and look at me, I'm still here. Am I in a grave? I don't know what happened to them, but I can tell you one thing, I'm still here. Come on and talk to me. I'm still here. <laughs> huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm still here. Come on, where are you at? Where are you at? Where are you at? I'm still here. I don't need no platform. I'm coming back to a pulpit. I want the platform. Get my new book. It'll be out. It's going to show you the divergencies between the two. What a pulpit is and what a platform. Because this generator, all they want is a platform. And my platform. And you're hosting conferences that you don't have the weight to carry. Come on, somebody. You're hosting things that you can't, you don't have, you, your mind is not ready to deal with it. You, you don't have the power to contain it. You haven't waited long enough. What about the wait? You haven't waited long enough. And you only want to compete. This is how my gift can work better than your gift. And how my gift is better than No, 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 no. Where's Timothy at? Come on here. I need you to meditate upon this. That your profiting may appear before all. Verse 16. Take heed unto yourself. That word heed in the Greek means pay attention. Pay attention to thyself. And unto thy what? Doctrine. If there's a charge over your life, you have to pay attention to the doctrine. You have to correct things through the doctrine. Where is the doctrine? Continue in them. In what? Paying attention to yourself. Watch what you do. Stop trying to tell everybody else what to do. Watch what you do, man of God. Watch what you do, woman of God. Pay attention to your idiosyncrasy. Pay attention to your blind spots. Pay attention to your failure. 
instead of trying to get everybody to follow you. And you don't know where you're going. You, you ain't even a legitimate apostle. You are, you just a walking apostle. As my wife said, you a walking apostle. You just walk. You, you ain't really got no depth. You ain't got no weight to you. No, because you ain't controlled your flesh in the pulpit. I'm going to shut that down right there. Continue in them. Listen, verse 16. For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that Hear thee. Come on. Come on. You hear that doctrine? If you do these things, accept the charge, accept the doctrine, stay with it, meditate upon it, read it, give yourself over to it, exhort, exhortate, stay with the doctrine. By doing so, you will and continue in them. The, that Greek word continue, it means to remain in what to remain in a chair in a classroom. Keep educating yourself no matter what comes. Don't mean you gotta go to a school. Keep educating yourself. Stay in, as you all say, in the vein of other leaders and instructors. You should have been sharing them. We giving this, this is straight. No chaser. Come on here. Dark liquor. Dark liquor. Straight no tape chaser. That's not legitimate. That's not legitimately. We just using that as a as a phrase. All right. Now let's look at this and then we're closing out. <clears throat> he says this second Timothy, put it on the screen. Second Timothy, the first chapter, the fifth verse and the sixth verse. Come on here. Actually, 2 Timothy 1, 5 through 7. Come on. Yeah, this is dark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hard. This is hard. Hard liquor. Yeah. That's it, Bree. Dark liquor. This is hard stuff. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. You still ain't delivered. I'm delivered. Thank you. <laughs> I'm delivered. Come on here. Listen to what it says. No, y'all. Second Timothy. There it is. He said, when I, Paul says, when I call to remember now, between first Timothy and second Timothy is about six months to a year. Paul had to write another letter to keep him encouraged about endurance. He says, when I call to remembrance, the unfeigned faith, unmovable faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother, Lois, Lois had faith. Thy mother, Eunice, Eunice had faith. And he said, I am persuaded that in thee also. So your grandmother had faith. Look at the vetting. We know history about you. Your grandmother had faith. Your mother, your grandmother, Lois, she had faith. Your mama, Eunice, she got faith. And we see the same faith operating in you. So we can look at your lineage and say you was raised right. You was raised right. That's going to qualify you for your prophecy coming to pass. You were raised right. You were instructed right. You were taught right. You were taught how to communicate. Your people are people of faith. I gave you a, a, a litany of people that I've been under. I gave it to you. History. Yes, Celeste, y'all, you was raised right. Y'all came up under me. Y'all came the hard way. I told you back then, it's going to be a hard way. You get some of them got mad and get upset and they so hard. You, know, you won't let me. No, 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 no. Okay, that was it. But now 20 years down the road. Come on here. You ready now? You ready now? Papa can validate it. Oh, they ready now. They can stand through anything, even up to death. They can stand it now. They ain't crippled. They ain't what they ain't wobbling. Anything that came out of my system with Sherry, it ain't wobbling. I promise you, right now, it ain't wobbling. In faith, it ain't wobbling. And if you're wobbling, you ain't let me see you wobbling. You better not. 
My God, my God. The leaders that I'm raising up, you're not wobbling. They're not wobbling. They're not wobbling. These are the wobbling. Come on here. Come on. Joanne Hooper, all she went through for the last year, year and a half, still going through. Not wobbling. Not wobbling. Great daughter. Great daughter. Not wobbling. Not wobbling. Not, not complaining. Not murmuring. Come on here. The church needs somebody to stand up. The church needs somebody to stand up. So the reason, here's what we have. The reason why my prophecy has not manifested is because you haven't received proper charging. You won't follow the doctrine. And you won't follow the order. Let's look at Titus. And I'm shutting it down. Titus 1. Titus 1 and 4. Titus 1 and 4. Through 5. Titus 1 and 4. Through 5. Titus 1. 4. Through 5. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Then I'm going to pray for you. I want to pray for you. Stay on long enough that I can, I'm going to pray for you before you get off. No, no, Jenna, you're not wobbling. No, you're not. No, -uh. you're not wobbling. You came out of me. Everything that come out of my loins is standing up. Hmm? And if it ain't standing up, then it's in rebellion. Come on here. And that ain't mine. I'm going to tell you that right now. Everything that don't mean you're perfect, but you standing up. Come on now. Come on now, you got enough faith in you, in, in, in you that when I when I got a day and I feel bad, you neither have enough faith to encourage me. Come on, talk to me. I, I fortified you enough so that if I ever got weak and I felt like collapsing, I know a name, I know a person that I can call a son or a daughter and get from them. I need a word from the Lord. What is what is the Lord saying to you for me? Y'all not talking to me. Say I understand. My God, I feel the power of God. Somebody better pray for this middle-aged giant because that's what I am. God, I thank you. Listen to what it says. Titus 1 and 4. To Titus, my own son. See, these are sons. After the common faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. For this cause left I thee in Crete, that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting. Well, that Greek word wanting is needed or supposedly should be done. Here it is. And ordain elders, not apostles, necessarily bishops, elders, Senior men, senior men in every city as I had appointed them. Now, the senior men can work with the young men. And we'll get to that in a minute. I'm going to go to First John. See? So you got to set the order. So here it is. My prophecy is not coming to pass. Number one, I didn't get a proper charge. I don't have a parental charge. Number two, I'm not following doctrine. I'm not following the word of God. Number three, order has not been set. Okay. If I've been charged, I've been vetted. I've been examined through and through. Through and through, I've been examined. If it's a legitimate prophecy, it's going to take you to God and it's going to take you to people who will be able to steer you. Now, I'm not going to say this, that they're going to be around forever, but I'm a father in the faith. And those who are connected to me, watch this. They have a phone number. Yes, they do. My sons and daughters have a phone number that when they get in trouble, they can call. Even if they ain't in trouble, they can send me a text. Now, who's your parent? Because if they just put their hands on you and sent you out into the world and took $3,000 from you for ordination and some red clothes that they gave you and a staff that you're not even worthy to carry, you under the false. You under the false. Huh. You, you, mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. 
Mm -mm. You can't stand a rebuke. You can't take reproval. You can't take correction. If that's your father, they're going to correct you somewhere along the line. And not only that, there's going to have to be a correction, a reproval, uh, a rebuke to the extent of you wanting to walk away. And the devils are going to tell you, walk away. He didn't have to say that. That wasn't fair. She didn't have to do me like that. That wasn't fair. If you ain't felt that, you ain't connected. Hmm? Lord, help me in here. Lord, help me in here. Hmm, this is one for the ages. We're going to leave this up. Hmm? Sometimes you're going to get mad. You're going to get mad. You're going to get mad You're because you don't understand. But it takes a father to have to chasten you so that you understand you are a son. You cannot be a son. You cannot be a daughter. And every time that you're corrected, you got to run and whisper in somebody else's ear how much you detest what he said or what she said. Then you're, you're not a son. You're a bastard. You're fatherless. You got to get to the point that you like Isaac. We're going up. I'm going to trust the father. If he lays me down on the altar, and I don't know what's happening, but if he lay me down on that altar, I'm going to trust that he know what he's doing. If he cut me open, if he cut me open, I know that God going to heal me. Or if he cut me open, if he shreds me, I know he know what he's doing. He, need, he sees something or knows something that I don't know. Leave us alone. All the servants, leave us alone. The, the lad and I are going to what? Worship. I need sons and daughters that know how to climb Mount Moriah for the worship experience. That is in God. We don't know if we were going to return or not, but we're going by faith. God said, take what you have, your only son. I need to test this thing. Uh, the man raised it up and got ready to come down on him. And heaven screamed out, wait, look in the thicket. You a man of faith and your son, he came in faith. Oh, my Shabbat. Hmm? They never told Sarah nothing. It's some things that the fathers and the sons do. Come on, somebody. That's only for them. Mm -hmm. It's some things that the mothers and the daughters do. It's only for them. Come on here. It's called privacy. It's called honoring the secret code. Uh, God help me. I don't think they're getting it. I don't think they're getting it. Hmm? You, 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 you say, you say, you say. You say you connected to somebody, but you never been you never been to Mount Moriah. You never been to Mount Moriah just to see. I know this could be my death, but I trust the God that's in this man that's brought him to something that's in this woman. I could lose everything, including my life. But I know that God is with them. And I know that my security is in God. God, I trust you. Papa, I love, I thank God for you. Who is the man that you can say, God, I love the man of God because I know if he reproves me, I'm helping somebody today. If he reproves me, if he rebukes me, if he corrects me, he's trying to get me chased. That means white. He doesn't want me like Esau, selling my birthright for some porridge, talking in the bed with some woman I shouldn't be with, getting in the bed with some man I shouldn't be with. I need to hear the voice. I need to hear the voice of the Father. <laughs> Who is it that cut you? My katata mata. <laughs> Mm. Who is it that cut you? Mm. <laughs> Whose words is it that can cut you open when you hear his voice? It'll cut. Oh, Shabbat. Ha, that's my dad. I, it's something wrong with me. It's something has entered into my spirit and he's cutting me. He, he didn't even tell me what it was, but he's cutting and severing something between. 
between that can mess up my connection. Hallelujah, my God, help me in here. Help me in here. Help me, God. Somebody on here should be praying for me. God, I thank you. People are sitting around here and but momentum, momentum, they're trying to figure out what happened. But three years ago, your papa prepared you and told you something's coming. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what's going to happen, but y'all don't need to be in service every Sunday. And I made my way to Atlanta by myself. And y'all knew something was happening. But you didn't understand it. It felt weird. But when you look now, when you look now, you can validate and vouch and say, but he told something back in 2015. And he was preparing us to not depend on a pew and a chair and a screen and dark lights to be in a place. He prepared us. For this hour, I feel the power. He prepared us for an hour that weakened the world like it did. But yes, in our Christianity. God have mercy. In our Christianity, I'm still standing in the power of God. In a pandemic and a plague, huh? Not none of us is lost. And the reason why a niece was taken like she was, it was because it was a premature demonic demise. I know what I'm talking about. Mm. Help me in here, Mother Rocks. Y'all better pray for me. Oh, I'm feeling something in here. My God, help me. Help me, help me. Help me, my God. Who I feel a weight in here, Jesus. Oh, God, have mercy. I feel a weight in here. Jesus, help me, help me, help me, help me. Help me, help me. I'm finished now. Look at 1 John, the second chapter. Put it on the screen, I feel wind in here. Lord have mercy. I don't get like this. I don't get emotional and I don't go through changes like this when I come on. But my God, my God, I'm trying to tell you something. The guards have changed in 2021 and some things have been removed. The reason why they've been removed is because they could be shaken. Ah, the only things that cannot be removed are the things that cannot be shaken. I'm not done. So whatever it is, where I've been, if you've been able to withstand the shaking, that means you qualify for the next seat. You can't just have a seat because you want to have a seat. You don't qualify for the seat when you haven't been vetted by God, when you haven't been vetted by leadership, when you haven't been vetted by the status quo and those fathers and mothers that sit high. Come on here. You have to have a name behind you. My God, and do they represent Jesus? Mm, 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 mm. Jesus, help me here. Let me go. 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 My God. My God. My God. Woo. Somebody tell him, let me go. Mm. Mm. Let me go. Woo. Woo. When trouble is lasting and it's weighty all around you. Sometimes what God got to do, he got to check out to see what's in your foundation and to see if your feet are really planted. Come on sometime. Mm, some of my sons and daughters that's on here, we didn't talk for months. I didn't know some things that was going, but I knew they were there. Y'all not talking to me. I knew that they were hurting. I knew that they were enduring things, but it was nothing I could say. Why? Because all I had was this screen. And it's not like I could get, I couldn't, it's not like I, I could go to the building and just gather. No, no, because God said, no, I'm not finished yet. Mm -mm. I, I, I didn't tell you to do that. 
I said, Father, what do I do? How do I, what? He said, just stand still and see the salvation because I'm going to show you some things that are around you. They're not what they really are, Richard. How ah, your heart. I'm talking to some leader now. I feel waiting here, y'all. Your heart loves them more than they love God, love me. I need you to understand, son, that some things require separation. Mm. And if those uh, uh, that, that, that name my name, I, I, I'll take what is left over when it's all over. Then I'll bring those back huh? Huh? and you'll come back rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. The bundles are coming in. Now that's when the millions are going to come. Y'all don't want to talk to me. Y'all don't want to talk to me. Uh, that's when the millions are going to surface. That's when the billions and legislation is going to be written federally. Hear the prophet. That, that's going to be things. But right now, God said, right now, I'm shaking. Uh, I'm shaking and I'm sifting wheat from the tear. Uh, Ah, my God, and I, I, I'm, I'm shaking, and I'm sifting, and I'm separating the goats from the sheep, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm, I'm separating uh, the wolves that are in sheep's clothing. Uh, somebody need to talk back to me right now. Uh -huh. I'm separating the, the things that I don't want from the things that I want, but I need a man, I need a woman to stand with strong conviction that they're not moved by people, but they can stand with, I feel God in here, they can stand with strong conviction and stand like I'm standing today and tell you, you knew three, four years ago, when Joanne Hooper was on here, ha, when I was on here, we were warning you ha, as apostles and prophets that this day was coming. Ha, so don't tell me now ha, with your tears ha, that you didn't know it was coming. Ha, you knew ha, that the false prophets ha, were making entry into the church. Ha, they crept into our pulpit ha, and they showed themselves to be like us. Ha, we told you, and what did you do? Hmm. You rejected us. Huh? You said we was crazy. Huh? You said we was off our rocker. Huh? And now look at where we are. And we still not huh? out of the woods yet. Huh? No, we ain't finished yet. There's still huh? some separating. Huh? Huh? Don't go out yet. Wait, huh? because death is still manifesting itself. Ha. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. How you going to be in a service and you still go to church and won't put on a mask? It's a problem with your consciousness. Ha. I believe your consciousness, let the preacher come down. Your consciousness has been seared with a hot iron. Ha. You done lost your mind. Ha. You done went crazy. Uh, but I came to tell mm, about 10, 15, uh, 20 to 25 of y'all uh, that God uh, is on your side. Uh, I know it's difficult. Uh, I know you're trudging through. Uh, I know it sometimes uh, it look like it won't end. Uh, but I came to tell you, uh, hear it today. Uh, Lord have mercy, Jesus. Uh, that God has already uh, assigned a door to your life. Uh, it won't last but so long. Uh, but don't complain about it. Uh, don't murmur about it. Uh, because God is preparing uh, an exit for you. Uh, but don't worry about the exit. Uh, don't worry about when it's over. Learn the lessons now. Lord have mercy. Learn the lessons now. Excuse me, that God wants you to gain. 
Learn the lessons now. Learn what God is trying to teach you. Learn that God is breaking you down. It feels uncomfortable. But you don't owe nobody nothing. I'm talking to some leader. They're worrying about the congregation. Man, stop worrying about the congregation. Stop worrying about the brook, the, 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 the brick and mortar. Stop worrying about the building. And get on your feet. Get on your knees. And get in your shawl. And lay out before God so he can talk to you, so he can reaffirm and affirm and confirm his perfect will. Lord, help me here. Ah, mm. Lord, I got to be somewhere about four o'clock. First John, first John, first John. Ah, somebody... Make sure that Prophetess Lily and Hannah get this. Uh, where's Jefferson at? Share this with Prophetess Lily and Hannah. Lord have mercy. Share it with her and Bishop. Lord have mercy. Help me in here today. First John, I'm finishing. I promise you right here. First John, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. First John, the second chapter. First John, the second chapter. I'm finished right here. First John, the second chapter and the 13th verse and the 14th verse. I'm finishing right here because I feel a strong preaching me. Lord, have mercy. Help me. Help me here. Yee, my, 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 my. I feel the praise erupting on the inside. My God, help me. I feel the praise erupting on the inside. Lord, have mercy. Help me, Jesus. Lord, help me, Jesus. Lord, help me, Jesus. I feel the praise. Before we leave out of here today, the Lord will let you know we've been in revival. Here it is. It says here, 1 John 2. Listen to what it says. I write unto you, firstly, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. You know God. That's me. We know him that Daniel said is called Ancient of Days. I've had an encounter with him on my side. Woo, Jesus, help me here. I've had an encounter with him. I promise you, I'm going to leave this up for y'all so y'all share it. I need to have over a hundred and some shares. Y'all share it and let me, because I want this to stay up. This is, this is fine. Listen to this. The father's You've known him from the beginning. The Bible said, in the beginning was the word. It was the logos. It was the logistics, the logic mind of God. And the word was with God. And the word was God. Who's been there huh, with him? Huh, uh, that is from the beginning. Uh -huh. I need you to share it. Oh, we're going to shake we're going to shake it. So if they take it from me, if they try to censor me and shut me down, y'all already sharing it until it goes viral. Lord, have mercy. Help me here. He said, I write unto you, young men, because you have old to come. This is Nazil. This is Jamal. He writes unto the young sons and young men because you have overcome the wicked one. Huh? Y'all know the warfare now and you've overcome him. I write unto you, little children, because you have known the father. Yeah, you've known a father figure mm, uh, through this screen that can bring you not just into deliverance, but that can bring you in the truth. Not one that can just bring you into prophecy, but who has died to self. To be an example to the church and life and large. I have written unto you, fathers, he reiterates, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I want to say it again. He kept telling me that. 
You know him. You know what he said. You know what he wants you to do. He said, from the beginning, I have written unto you, young men, because you are strong and the word of God abideth in you. And you have overcome the wicked one. Yes, little children, verse 18, it is the last days. Come on. Uh, and as you have heard that Antichrist, he has not shown himself yet, but we know he's here. By the calamity that's in the planet, by the weather conditions that's in the planet, I need you to share it. My God, my Torah. Share it with Africa. Come on here. Share it with the islands. Uh huh. They ain't going to stop us no more. They can't stop us now. You ain't shutting nothing down. You can't do it now. Come on here. Because it's more than me. Y'all ain't saying nothing. It's more than me. Yeah, it's more than me. I got a whole lot of people that's behind me. I got a whole lot of daughters with high heels on, devil, that's coming to put their plant, their heel in your eye. I got a lot of sons that are behind me that's about to light your forehead up with their fists. Hope, help me here. I got a lot of people behind me that are not intimidated and not worried about what is to come. Ah, uh, here it is. He says... You know the Antichrist shall come, verse 18. Even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. Yeah, they have. Uh-huh. It's so bad. Listen to this. He said, they went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, no doubt they would have continued on with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest, come on now, that they were not of us. But you have an unction. You got oil <clears throat> from the Holy One, and you know all things. So if I never teach another thing, you got enough under your belt to hold you. Hey, Shabbat, come on, come on here. Come on, Charmaine Ford. You got enough under your belt. There's enough oil on you hmm. to know a liar and a deceiver. Ah, huh. uh, when you see him. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, nah, nah, nah. See. Let's go to 27. He said, but the anointing, he said, verse 26, he said, these things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. Uh huh. They want to make you, the Greek word is planos. It means to make you wonder in your mind, to try to make you psychologically go into confusion and desertion. He said, no. He said, there's enough oil in you to break the seduction. He said, but you, but the anointing, mm -hmm, not just the unction, that's different. The oil that is in you, you received of him, abideth in you. And you need not that any man teach you. Mm -hmm. Stop running to these false prophets trying to give your money for answers. The answer is inside of you. It's right here. When I get off, go back and listen to what I said so that you can hear it and understand. This man gave us the facts regarding prophecy. I don't need a prophet right now. I don't need a word from a man and then I got to pay him for it. Although today you need to put a seed in the ground. Let me say that because it would be unfair for me to let you leave out of here today and that you don't put in this unique day, put a seed in the ground on this word and on the turn of your life. Those who are mature enough that understand that. Yes, we are the dynamic duo, baby. And we are coming together. That's my big brother, apostle. Oh, we the dynamic duo. And you ain't seen nothing yet. 
We about to rock this whole tri-state and everything that's trying to make inroads into the tri-state, that's trying to make inroads into Atlanta. I want to serve notice on you. You have no stay here. You have no position here. You are not welcome here. Every demonic overload and overturn, you are not welcome here. You have no seat here. You have no place here. You have not earned a right here. So I don't care who invited you or who welcomed you. You don't have no stay here. All right, here we go. He said, now, help me, Holy Ghost. He said, you need not that any man teach you. Mm -mm. You don't need no more instruction and education. You need to put to work what's already in you. Listen to this. But as the name, as the same anointing, it teaches you of all things. And it is truth. And it is no lie. And even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. Now, that's what I'm trying to tell you. That's what I'm trying to tell you now. You already got it. So I need you uh, today to leave out of here now knowing I'm ready. Uh, put it on the screen. Say, I heard a father. I've heard the general. I've heard him speak into my life. I may not have heard from dad for a couple of days, but I know who my papa is. I'm, I'm not crazy. I'm not out of my mind. I know that when he prays for me, I know when he prays for my marriage and my children, I know when he prays for the things that concerns me, that even when I don't know it or ask a request, I'm in the Holy Ghost. He's already interceded. There is answers on the way. So I command now every portal that has been locked up. Uh, with demonic pressure, I command you now to release. I command the wires that have your money on the line. I command wire transfers to be released now. Mm -hmm. Not a month from now, I command it to be transferred now. I command it to be released into you now, you took responsibility for where you've been and for where you missed it. And now that we did it, because while I was preaching, you were repenting. While I was preaching, you already had the answer. I said, she said it. She said a settlement. I prophesied that everything that's been held up in your settlement, I commanded anything that's financially held up. I command it now to release into your hands. Wire transfers, release now. I put God on the line and heaven connect now that every prophecy over your head, your mind, your life, your spirit would release right now. I command it that you walk in the fullness of what God has called you to and through and for. I command now that your life be in release mode. I release you and I activate every stagnant gift that belongs to you. While I release the gift, I command that the proper administration, operation, and I command the proper measurement and the proportion be released unto you. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I command now everything that's been held up in your bloodline. Ah, I command it that your father, because of his disobedience, ah, because of your mother and her disobedience, ah, your grandparents, I command now ah, as a paternal leader, ah, that it be unlocked. Ah, I command it now every door that has been shut. Hmm. I command the church of Philadelphia huh, to receive the key of David, huh, to lock what is unto lock what is open. Huh. 
and shut to open what is shut and to shut what is already open. I grant you the grace and the power, the deeds and the operation to move in it now. I command those that are leaders who've been suffering huh, like Hosea huh, with a broken heart huh, over the church. Huh, command those that are like Jeremiah huh, who have been suffering huh, with a broken heart huh, over the people, huh, over America and the insurrection. Huh, I command you now huh, to walk in, release it. Huh, let it go now huh, because no matter what happens, huh, you will survive huh, and you will see the turnover huh, even as God has promised. Huh, it shall be unto you huh, even as I have spoken. Huh, it will and it is now coming to pass. I, I want you to receive it. I got to get off of here now. Hmm. But I want you to share it. I'm going to leave this up here because I feel the weight of it. My God, my God. But I need you to praise him now. I don't care where you are. I need us to, to put a praise on this. That we rejoice in whatever way you praise. We need to praise and rejoice that God is opening doors that have been shut for the last 30 and 40 years, uh, let me enlighten you uh, with something that just came in my ear. Uh, the Holy Ghost told me to tell you uh, that no witch or warlock uh, shut the door on you. Uh, that words didn't have enough power to do it. Uh, he said, but what happened was uh, he allowed their words to hold you uh, in position. Hmm that you wouldn't go before your time. Huh? Say it, say it, say it, say it. So Mr. Warlock, Mr. Wizard, Mrs. Witch, thank you, but I break your broom, I break your mind, I penetrate your coven, and I command confusion and desertion to be amongst you. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, he yet stands in the fullness of power, Lord over all. And I came to tell every witch and warlock, you can't confuse these words that come from the voice of this man. I came to tell you which every knee shall bow of things on heaven and things on the earth and things beneath the earth and every and every and every tongue shall confess yes it will that he is Lord to the glory of the Father. Now let me close out with this right here. For ten of y'all that can catch it, I came to tell you that no weapon that's been formed has been able to prosper. It may have looked like it may have felt like what it was you saw the prayers and their enchantment their charming manipulate some people you love but it still was just the formation. But although the weapon was formed, it could not and it would not prosper. There's no gain that's coming out of what they tried to do and out of what they say. You have become triumphant through all that you, I feel like preaching in it, Lord, help me hear me. Through all that you've been through, huh, you have become triumphant. Huh, and blessed be to God, huh, who always huh, causes us to triumph huh, in the things of God huh, with the savor and the smell of his aroma. God, I praise you. So I say them no weapon huh, that's formed against you. Huh, it shall not prosper. Watch it. Here it is. Now here it is. And every tongue huh, that has been formed against you, huh, every tongue, no weapon that's formed against you, shall prosper. 
but every tongue uh, that has been formed against you, uh, you will condemn it uh, in the judgment. Uh, this is the heritage uh, of the Lord's servant. Uh, and it is by me. In other words, God is saying this. Yeah, they sent it, but it didn't touch you. Yeah, they said it, but it didn't work. Yeah, they blackballed you, but it ain't stopping nothing. You've grown and materialized through their words. Who am I talking to today? It's got to be somebody that's coming alive. Oh, I see about 10 folk that are coming up out of a grave right now. Your life will never be the same. Come on and help me pray. Come on, we're going to praise him. We're going to praise him in here this day. Come on and praise him. Oh, God. Come on. Come on, come on. Wherever you at, here it is, here it is, here it is. Keep calling me crazy. I'm going to show you what sanity is. You ain't done nothing, witch. You ain't done nothing. I've been waiting for the right time to strike this. Today I pulled the trigger from heaven. It's going to get up off of you. It's going to back up now. Come on. It's going to back up now. Come on. Where's your praise at? It's going to back up. I'm already late for my appointment. It's got to back up. It's got to back up. It's got to back up. Hey. It's got to back up. Curses fall off. Lies fall off. Come on! You can't leave out of this service without a praise. Put a praise on the screen. God met us today. This was all Him. You couldn't have planned it. Which, in the words of my daughter, Anise Davis, repent or die. I feel her all around me. I feel the saints. I feel the saints. I feel the saints. I feel the covering, y'all. Hey, come on. I feel healing in here. Come on, come on, come on. What's in my house? Come to your house. What's in this studio? Come to where you are. Meet them now. Meet them now. You will not be intimidated and fearful of a warlock, of a witch, and whatever words they speak against you. Die, witch, or repent. Keep your mouth off of God's people. Jesus. church. Come on, church. Come on. It won't work. It won't work. You're trying to tie me up. They're trying to tie your money up. They're trying to tie your good name up. But just know. Oh, my God. My God. No weapon. Not one. Not one mastery of hell. Of the depths of hell can stop what God has assigned to your life. Shapa, Shondamaki, Satakaho, Ruskebabahanda, Ramba, Teko, Ruska, Shamba, Denebeke, Ruskaba. I command it, come off of them now. Come off of them now. Take the weight off of them. Weights come off your mind. Come off your neck. They're talking about the one, two, three in the cervix. One, two, three in the cervix. In the cervix. One, two, three. Come out of there. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out of there. Let them go. Let them go. Let it. Come out. I command it to die. What's been holding you? Die. Die.
Oh God. Come on. Come on. Get off my marriage. Get off my mind. You coming out of my house today. When my husband get back home today, he get off of work at five by the time he get home for dinner. That argument, that dispute, that dispel, I feel a praise in here. It's dead. It's de I feel like dancing in here. Die. Die. I said die. I speak with apostolic authority. As a father, as a general, as a as, a, as one who is a preacher, a teacher in all faith and verity, I command it now die. 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 You'll work for 30 years. Get off of my body. Every tumor, every polyp, every cancer, lupus, come out the joints. Come out the back of the back of the back of the back. Come out of here now. Come out. Let them go. Let them go. The strong, I heard the Holy Ghost say, the strong man is here. Get out the house. The strong man is here. <laughs> There's a takeover. They didn't know we was coming. There's a takeover. The strong man is in the house. Come out. Come on, come on. With the finger of the Holy Ghost, I command the devil. I command demonic structures and systems. Come out of there. You masha. Oh, mama, 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 Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, God met you today. Come on. Come on. trial on drugs, weed, crack, crack cocaine, heroin, meth, I come out, come out, come off of them, come off of them, come off of them, I want some of you to start anointing your children's beds till they get uncomfortable, anoint the children at night, put the oil on them, put the oil on them, while we're in the final stages of this pandemic put the put the oil on them I hear the Holy Ghost Woo! Woo, Jesus this is why you suffer so much hatred this is why you feel the offense this is why you've been betrayed like you've been betrayed and wounded like you've been wounded in your own family. This is why familiar spirits fight you because of the great weight and the power on your life. You didn't settle. You didn't settle. You didn't settle. God, my God, my God. We really have revival. Ah! Oh, my God. I need you to dry your tears. No more crying over this. When you come out of this one, everybody's going to know your name. Everybody's going to know your name. And when your name is spoken, it won't be because of a lie from something in your demented past, but it's going to be because of the brightness and the light, the illuminatory of your future. Come on here. I need you to praise him. If you're in your car, pull over to the side and tap your feet or something. Come on. Tap your 
feet or something. Tap your feet. It's unimaginable. It's unimaginable. 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 What has happened to you? What you suffered through? What you had to handle? And you kept your mouth shut. And you didn't resist. And you didn't fight it. The dirt they threw on you. The calamity you went through. But you came out better. <laughs> you came out stronger. <laughs> your immune system got built up with power. I feel them. I feel him on the. Uh, 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 uh. You resist it. The trial vetted me. <laughs> Put that on the screen. The trial vetted me. Tribulation vetted me. I've been examined by hell. And hell has found no fault with me. Hey, I'm coming out. And when I come out, I'm leading captivity captive. I'm going to give some gifts unto men because I've been vetted. I've been vetted. I stood the test. I stood the test of time. And I'm still smiling. And I'm still happy. And I'm still enduring. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Lord have mercy. My, 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 my. All right, y'all, don't fool with me. I'm telling you. I feel it in here today. I feel it in here today. I'm staying here. My tears have vetted me. What? My tears yeah, through the years have vetted me. My tears are saying to heaven, I, I, I can't find no fault with him. I, I, I can't find no fault with her. I can't find no fault. I can't find that because I'm a threat to hell. Hey, my seven. Rambe Beko Tamanan City. Jesus. 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 Wednesday afternoon revival. Somebody said the Lord ambushed 
the ambush. Now, go prophesy on him. <laughs> That's the truth. The Lord ambush the ambush. Mother said, my tears through the, and that's something. They don't know what you had to go through. They don't know when you were smiling, you just had a breakdown. The glory of God. The glory of God. The glory of God. Glory. 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 I'm weeping, y'all. I'm weeping. I'm weeping. I'm weeping. Ah, my God, I gotta stop. I'm weeping. I stand covered. But I still shut up. Not another day will you take from me. Ah, God. Ah, God. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. All right, y'all. Listen, I'm going to be late getting to where I got to get to. Now, listen to what I'm saying. So anybody that's going to listen to this later, they'll understand. I don't get on here and I don't do this for money or anything. I don't. But because of what God did today, bless the prophet. Bless the man of God. Bless the man of God today. Those who are mature, only those who are mature and understand. If it's going to confuse you, I'm not talking to you. But I promise you, if you put that seed in the ground, God is going to bless your life. You need to seal. That's what we do. We seal the entry and the work of the word inside of you. And when we do it, we seal it with a financial release. That's how it's done. The false ones do it and have taken from you. People like myself who've taken a stand and hadn't ha received anything in years. I'm telling you, stretch and watch God do the rest. I love you. Be blessed. The cash app is on there if you choose. The PayPal is on there if you choose. Sons and daughters that know me, I'm you invest in that today. Invest in that. To, about that. Hey, Shabbat, you couldn't have planned this. You couldn't have planned this. I've been silent. The cash app is put the cash app on the screen for people. They, they, they want the cash app. Thank you, Jesus. You can't make this up today. You can't do that. You can't do that. You can't make it up. You can't make it up. You can't make it up. You can't, my, 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 da, 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 there it is, cash app, dollar sign, Dr. Richard Kent Jr. There they are, they putting it on there. Sons and daughters, my sons and daughters, thank you, Jesus. Not because Papa need it, because he don't, I don't, it's not like that. I'm teaching you it's right, so when the time comes and we return, and that's for everyone that's on here, all of you. If you're under leaders, I see those who are with my big brother, Apostle Bruce Lester. Sow a seed into him. Sow a seed. Shanna, uh, uh, Shonda, you bless me today. You bless Apostle Robinson too. Put your seed in the ground for the development, for those that held you, for those that loved you, for those that pray for you like this, for those who who, br who are bringing you into your destiny. You got to be ready. Yes. Yes. You want to, somebody says, 
I need a, I need a release. That's how you get it. You, that's how you get the release. When you put the seed in the ground, you've given to the false for years. Now you heard a true man of God led you. I'm going to leave that up today. Go back and examine it and study it through and through. The reason why prophecy has not been manifested is because we didn't get the proper charging. We didn't follow through with the doctrine. And lastly, we don't have the oil. I mean the order. We didn't have order. Put them in order. Follow it like I showed you. And watch what happens. I love you. Have a great rest of the day. I got to do what I got to do. And you're going to do what you got to do. Be blessed. I love you.